In this video, we'll be placing beams in Revit structure. To draw these beams, we need to select the beam tool while in any model view. In this case, we'll come into our second floor view and then start to zoom in just a little bit so that we can see where each of our column locations are at. Next, we're going to need to come up here underneath the Structure tab and then select on Beam. Now, the kind of beam that we're going to need to have in this case is going to be a W21 by 57. So that happens to be a specific steel shape and size. Now, if we look here on our list, we can see that all we have loaded in here are W8 by 10s through a W16 by 26. What that means is that none of them are quite large enough for the kind of building that we're building. So what we're going to need to do is come in and actually load in another beam size. So up here, there's this option for load family. I'll go ahead and select on load family. Next, this is going to be a structural beam. So we need to look for the word structural. Now there's no category here that just says beams, but what this is is going to be structural framing. So go into there. There's an option there for steel. Then down toward the very bottom, there's a W wide flange, and that's what we want. So go ahead and highlight on that and click on Open. Once you do that, it's going to bring up a list of all the different W shapes that we could load into our project. In this case, once again, we want to do a W21 by 57. So we're just going to find that on the list. by scrolling down or clicking. And here we have our W21 by 57. Now, if you select on it in order to be able to highlight that row, you can then click on OK, and that will load that into your project. Now, if you get this message that says family already exists, that's partially true. What it really means is that there's already a W family loaded into the project. Do you want to add that extra size to it? And in this case, Yes, you do. So just say override the existing version, and it'll go ahead and add that extra size into your project. Now, if we look here on the list, we're going to find a W21 by 57, the one we just loaded in. So go ahead and select on that. Now, if you want to be able to draw these in, well, we can do it individually first, and that's pretty easy just by zooming in, picking a point. In this case, it's the intersection of A and 1, and then picking another point over here. And you'll notice that by default, it's coming in as just a single line. If we do this again, it'll show up as just a single line again. Now, this is the way it's supposed to display in this kind of view. Now, when I say that, it really means that this is the way it's supposed to display in this detail level. In this case, we have a detail level being coarse. But if we change this to be a detail level of being fine, we can then see it having each little layer of material, each thickness showing up here. So if we decide to draw another one, this time we're going to see all the lines and the appropriate thickness, just like if we were looking at it from above. But one thing that we could do is we could continue on drawing in between each of these, sort of playing connect the dots if we wanted to. But there is a faster way to go about doing this. And the faster way is to move up here to where it has on grids and select on grids. Next, move your mouse over here, sort of between the five and the six, and then click and hold your mouse button down. And then just create a window going around all these different things. Now what this is going to do is it's going to select the structural grid and it's going to place this kind of beam along the structural grid. And all you have to do at this point is just click on this big green check mark here that says finish. And now we have those beams in all these different locations. Now one beam that you may have gotten is this one right here. We don't really want it. So if you end up getting an extra beam here or here, feel free to just escape out and just select on the beam and then hit the delete key on the keyboard or right click and then go down here to delete and say delete. And it'll just get rid of the extra beams that we don't need. Now we can go ahead and take a look at this in the 3D view so we have a better idea of what it is that we've done so far. All right, so this is what our condition currently is. Now, the next thing we need to do is be able to bring these exact same shapes and sizes all the way on up to the top of our building. So in order to be able to accomplish that, we're going to go back to our plan view. And you can either do that by double clicking here on second floor or just closing this window down. And if you move your mouse down here to near where this D is at, don't actually click on anything, but just sort of click in space, hold your mouse button down and just window around 
all these different entities that are here. Let go of the button, everything will turn blue. Now this is a little bit more than what we really wanted to be able to select. So we can come up here to this thing that says a filter. It kind of looks like a funnel. And if you click on the filter, what we want to be able to select here is that we're going to select our structural framing. So you can clear out structural columns because they already exist, as well as just the regular columns. Those are the architectural columns. And we can click on OK. Now the only thing that are currently selected are those different beams that we just placed. Now that we've done that, we can come up here to the copy command. And it's not this copy command. You have to pick this copy command, which is the copy to clipboard. Once you've done that, you can click on the word paste. Be sure to click on the word and select on align to selected levels. What this is going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to choose which levels we want to have the structural information brought up to. In this case, we want it to be brought up all the way up to the roof. So just highlight everything from the third floor down the roof. And you can do that by selecting on third floor, holding down your shift key, and then picking on roof. Next, click on OK. Now, it might take you a few seconds here, but once it finishes processing, feel free to come up here to the 3D view and click on that. And what you'll see is that it's copied that up level by level all the way up to the roof level. So in conclusion, to place your perimeter beams, you just need to leverage the beam tool up here on the ribbon and select the grids or points where you want to place your beams.